Yo, we have finally made it to object-oriented programming in Java. So, what is an object exactly? Look around wherever you're sitting right now. You are surrounded by different objects. For example, next to me I have my phone, a cup of coffee, and a microphone. In programming, an object can represent a real-world entity. They can do one of a few things. Objects can hold data, and they can perform actions. The data they hold are known as attributes. The actions that they can perform are known as methods. Objects can have things, and they can do things. Some attributes that a person may have would be a name, their age, their height, and their weight. A few methods, meaning actions that a human could do, a person, well, they could eat and they could sleep. Objects are reference data types. We store the data for an object in a location known as the heap. In this demonstration, we're going to be creating some car objects, but we'll need a class. A class can serve as a blueprint to create objects. So what we're going to do is create a new Java class. We will create a class of car. We have two classes, our main class and our car class. A class can behave as a blueprint for creating objects. We'll start by listing the different attributes that a car may have. So what does a car have exactly? Well, a car could have a make, that would be a string. We can assign it if we would like. Think of a car you'd like, or a car you drive. I'll pick my favorite car. The make will be Ford. Another attribute could be a model. And I will pick a Mustang. Cars could have a year, that would be an integer. Int year, I'll pick the year 2025. A price, that could be a double. Double price equals, let's say, $58,000 and 99 cents. A car's engine could be running. That could be a Boolean. Boolean is running. I will set that to be true or false if the car is turned off. Things that an object has, in this case car, these are known as attributes. They are things that an object has. Now, heading back to our main class, we will create a car object. We're already a little familiar with working with objects. For example, a scanner is an object. To create a scanner, we would type scanner scanner equals new scanner. Then you type system.in. Or with random objects, we would type random random equals new random. Now to create a car object, we're going to be utilizing this class. We'll type car, then think of a name for this car. We'll just say car, all lowercase, equals new car. We're following a similar pattern. Car, car, equals new car. We don't need the scanner or this random object. I was just demonstrating something. We now have a car object that we can use. Our car object has these attributes, these things. If I was to print my car object, here's what we can see. Well, since objects are a reference data type, if you were to print your car directly, you get a memory address. If you need to access one of these attributes, you have to follow the object name with a dot. A dot is known as the dot operator. It allows you to access things within an object. If I need the model of my car, I would take my object name, use the dot operator, followed by the attribute name. If I was to print the model of my car, that would output Mustang. Let's print some of the other attributes. Car.make, who manufactures the car? Ford. What is the year of my car? Car.year. 2025. What's the price? Car.price. $58,000 and 99 cents. Is my car running or not? Car dot is running. False. The car is not currently running. You can modify and change these attributes too. With our car object, let's access the is 
running attribute, I will set that to be true, like we're turning the car on. Is running is now true because we changed the attribute of is running. Not only do objects have the capability to hold data, meaning attributes, they can perform actions. They can have their own methods. Going back to our car class, we'll define a few methods. What sorts of actions can a car take? Well, we could start a car. Within this class, we will define a method. We don't need that static keyword this time. We need a return type. We'll say void, we're not returning anything. We will define a method of start. Let's do the following. Let's output you start the engine. We'll create another method. Void stop. Let's say you stop the engine. So now with our car, we can delete these print line statements. We'll take our car object, use the dot operator, call the start method. This should output you start the engine. Or we could stop car.stop. You start the engine, you stop the engine. Not only that, within these methods, let's change one of these variables, one of these attributes. Within our start method, let's take is running, set that to be true. Within the stop method, we'll take is running, set that to be false. Going back to our main class, before starting the car, let's output car.isRunning. After starting the car, let's output car.isRunning, and then stopping the car, we'll output car.isRunning. The car is currently not running, that's false. You start the engine, the car is now running, that's set to true. You stop the engine, the car is no longer running, that is false. Let's add two more methods. We can start, we can stop, we can drive. We'll create a method to drive, void drive. Let's output you drive the, I'm going to use string concatenation, We'll concatenate the model of the car. So my car is a Mustang. We will create a method to break. You break the plus our model variable, our model attribute. We can delete these lines of code. Let's drive the car, car.drive. You drive the Mustang, and here's the model of the car. And we can break, car.break. You drive the Mustang, you break the Mustang. There's one issue with this, though. With our class of car, every car that we make has the same attributes and methods. We can only create 2025 Ford Mustangs. If I was to create another car object, let's say car, car2 equals new car, we'll rename the first car as car1, and I'll output some of their attributes, car1.make plus a space plus car1.model, we'll do this with our second car object too, car2, car2.make car2.model. These cars have the same attributes. It would be nice if we had a way to customize them so that each car is unique, because currently they're all the same. They're different cars, but they have the same attributes and methods, which is kind of lame. That's why in the next video, we're going to discuss constructors. By passing in arguments, we can create unique objects. In summary, an object is an entity that holds data it has attributes, and they can perform actions. They can perform methods. They have things, and they can do things. And well, everybody, those are objects in Java.